Hi friends, so welcome to the 15th part of the series on must know radiological images. Uh, my name is Dr. Zainu Bora and I've done my MBBS and MD in radiology from Ames New Delhi. So what I want you to do uh, after you watch this video or while you're watching this video is basically go to the telecom group uh, radiology with Dr. Zainu Bora and there you'll find a PDF or right? there you'll find a PDF of all of these 15 sessions together and a compiled link. So I want you to revise all of these sessions very very quickly, it will hardly take you 1 or 2 hours to do that if you see it on 1.5 or 2x and I want you to just make the notes on PDF simultaneously and revise it one more time so that at least the images that you've seen in these 15 short videos are done and dusted, they are consolidated in your mind and then you move ahead alright so we'll take it 15 at a time and after this we'll continue okay so that is what I want you to do uh, these 15 uh, uh, sessions PDFs. Um, all right, you'll get them compiled and then you uh, see the videos and analyze them. All right, so that will be uh, great for you. Okay, so having said that, uh, the topic of today's discussion is going to be distal end of radius fractures. All right, so we want to look at the four kinds of fractures which affect the distal end of radius. So, the first set of images that I'm showing you is the AP and lateral view of the uh, wrist and what you find here is that there is an extra articular fracture of the distal end of radius so first extra articular then what is very important is the displacement so always look at the thumb right so this is the thumb here so that is anterior that is showing you anterior and here you can see the displacement is against the thumb so this is dorsal displacement so when you have extra articular fracture with dorsal displacement you remember c and d go together so this is coli's fracture so coli's fracture remember dorsal displacement Apart from this, how CD will also help you is if there is malunion, what kind of deformity do you expect? So remember, you will see a deformity, D4, dinner fork deformity here. Coley's fracture, you know the mechanism of action, fall on outstretched hand. In fact, most of these, all of these fractures will have that mechanism. So Fush is the mechanism of injury here and this frequently affects uh, postmenopausal females who have osteoporosis, right? So this is something uh, that is important. Apart from that, you can also remember the frequent classification that is used for uh, the Coley's fracture. On the other hand, when you have a similar, sorry, on the other hand, when you have a similar sort of extra articular fracture on AP, but on lateral, you notice that the fragments are displaced towards the thumb, which is anterior or volar displacement. So volar coles, remember, is called as Smith fracture. So this is Smith fracture where you have anterior displacement of the fracture fragment. Again, this is extra articular corticocancellous junction. So this is about Smith and the kind of deformity that will occur when this is not treated properly, there is malunion is going to be the garden spade deformity. So you can remember S for Smith, S for garden spade deformity. All right. Following this, we have this kind of fracture. What is the difference between Coley's and Smith and this? This is intra-articular. Do you see how it's extending into the joint surface? So when you have an intra-articular fracture, I want you to remember that this is been called as Barton fracture. So how do we remember? When you want to drink a ton of alcohol, right? So when you want to drink a ton of alcohol, you go inside a bar, right? You can't get it outside, so you go inside. So remember, you have to go within the joint. So intra-articular is Barton fracture. Finally, the one where only the styloid, so see here, just the radial styloid is fractured. So this is called as the chauffeur fracture. In the uh, retro days when you had to drive the car with a stick, right? So that time there used to be impaction and the radial styloid used to get fractured like this. And this is what is called as the chauffeur fracture. It's actually an avulsion. What attaches to the radial styloid? It's the brachioradialis muscle, right? So brachioradialis muscle actually gets avulsed. So this is chauffeur. So remember Coley's Smith Barton fracture and Schoffer fracture are the four fractures we wanted to discuss today. Thank you so much. I hope um, this was useful. Thank you.